Welcome back to America Right Now. I'm Emma Reckenberg, in for Tom Basile. In the wake of the BLM and George Floyd protests and riots last year, blue states have issued a host of policing bills with new restrictions on our men and women in blue. At the same time, we've seen a 45 percent increase in police retirements and resignations were up 18 percent in the past 12 months. There's also a big impact on recruitment. It's the subject of our Thin Blue Line segment. For more on this topic, we're happy to welcome in Steve Rogers, a retired lieutenant from the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department. He's also a retired U.S. military intelligence officer who served on the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. Lieutenant, good morning, and first of all, thank you for your service. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, let's get talking about these new police bills and laws. They've been introduced across the country. They range from issues like training techniques, body camera use, and also those use of force restrictions. What do you make of some of the new plans you've seen for the police departments? What we're going to see is a very bad situation become catastrophic with regard to the uh, dramatic increase in crime across the country. None of these reforms, and I looked at all of them, are going to do anything to help the police maintain law and order. Uh, the police need the tools. They need the backing of the government. And as a result of what these reforms are doing, they're not going to get that. And by the way, uh, recruitment, as you said, is way, way down and uh, retirements are way, way up. And I want to talk to you about that as well. Maybe the challenges that these police departments, the remaining officers might face because we've seen retirements increase and also a lesser number of recruitments. Look, the challenges are going to be, again, uh, to a degree that those officers who are remaining on the job are going to look to get out as early as they could. Uh, police can no longer be proactive. You know, I've always advocated proactive policing. You go out, you look for criminal elements, and you arrest people based on uh, low-level crimes or quality of life crimes. They're not going to do that anymore. It's going to become reactive. And when the police become reactive, they're not out there looking for criminals. They're just waiting for the crimes to happen. They're going to do their job. But why go the extra mile if you, the police officer, becomes the criminal if you take every action you can to prevent a criminal act. You also said that uh, current police officers are lacking some support and backing from the government officials, maybe their local leaders as well. Have you heard from police officers who've really expressed that frustration? Yes. In fact, I've spoken to police officers all over the country. I still network with a lot of them. And, and to a person, the common thread is, look, we're, we're afraid. They're not afraid of the criminals. They're afraid of the government. Uh, we're afraid that if we make an honest mistake and mistakes happen, uh, if we do something uh, not according to like these new reforms, we're going to get into trouble. We don't have their backing. And I'll give you an example. Just yesterday, Seattle uh, and Washington State, I'm sorry, decided to withdraw a canine, a dog, to search a criminal suspect who allegedly committed a murder. What do you think of that? They couldn't use the dog because they're in fear of what will happen to them, that is the police, if the dog bites the criminal suspect. So what we see here is fear, not against the criminals, but fear with regard to how the government's treating the cops. Well, we've also seen recently, too, maybe store surveillance cameras uh, noticing criminals uh, filling up their arms with merchandise, walking out of these stores. I'm talking specifically in the state of California because of those local laws there where there's a number, uh, a dollar sign when it comes to merchandise that you can take without being uh, with the police really going after you here. Do you see this becoming a trend and how much of it is to blame on these local laws uh, that allow criminals to do these actions? Well, I've spoken to a uh, large, and I won't name the department store, a very, very large department store nationwide, and they said they're losing about uh, uh, $20 million a year just in shoplifting because there's no longer enforcement. Now, why isn't there no longer enforcement? A police officer has to make a decision. Are you going to go arrest somebody and then end up in a physical confrontation with them because they hit you, and then you hit them, and guess who ends up getting prosecuted? The cop. So these reform laws are doing nothing but strengthening the ability of criminals to commit crimes and reducing the ability of cops to do their job. And you see it. I mean, it's obvious. Crime is escalating. Criminals know there's no longer fear of the police. You know, we've seen in many cases some state officials now investigating misconduct uh, if it were to occur in a police department. Are you concerned about these investigations becoming overly political? 
Yes, look, uh, I'm for one uh, in favor of any police officer who violates the law, who commits a crime, who tarnishes the badge, who commits police brutality. They don't need to be on the job. No good cop wants that type of officer on the street. But saying that, police officers will pull people over and they will be accused of pulling a person over, for, for example, for, for race, for color, for creed, for religion, for anything these days. Now it goes to internal affairs. And that police officer is going to go through hell when it comes to possible prosecution. But there's something good that did happen. Cameras. Cops are now saying, you know what, it's good we have cameras because you're finding that nearly 80 to 90 percent of the accusations against them are false. Mm, really important point uh, you share with us on the program today. That's retired police lieutenant Steve Rogers joining us live. Uh, thank you so much, lieutenant. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Up next.